What I've identified for consideration among our membership is we remove those roster minimums and you're expected to play as scheduled. That means your team needs to be healthy to compete. And if not, that game won't be rescheduled. Okay, so let me break this down a little bit as Bart shakes his head over here. If you are not healthy enough to play, there will be no postponing the game. There will be no rescheduling the game. There will be no shuffling at all. Instead, what there will be is a forfeit, okay? And here's a tweet from Greg Sankey regarding vaccines. He says, the COVID-19 vaccine, widely available, proven to be highly effective, and when people are fully vaccinated, we all have the ability to avoid serious health risks, reduce the virus's spread, and maximize our chances to experience college, sports, and life like we are accustomed to. I mean, he's not wrong in that sense at all, but nonetheless, what he is saying here, Bart, and I'm not reading between the lines, is, Get vaccinated, stay healthy, or you're going to have a forfeit, and then the College Football Playoff Committee is going to have a problem figuring out who's in and who's out, similar to last year. But there's going to be no reshuffling, rescheduling. This may be one of the most idiotic statements I've ever heard, right? Because, first of all, vaccination is a personal decision. Like, yeah, I'm vaccinated, right? But, you know, my kids aren't, right? It's a personal It's a personal decision and i wonder how many of these young athletes young men decisions are being made by their parents right because your parents are still a big influence you can't just force somebody to get vaccinated and also it depends and i think it determines what region of of the of the country that you live in right because as far as the exposure but also when you talk about like getting vaccinated yeah that's one thing but it is always um certain circumstances in which you can do everything right and be vaccinated just look at the yankees Right. The Yankees, most of those guys were vaccinated. Gleyber Torres was vaccinated. He still got exposed and he still got the virus. And who's to say that the reason that you got the virus may not be because of any wrongdoing of your own. Look it at could, our right, own Jay Will. <laughs> right. It, it, it may not it may not be something that you did on your own. It could be something as, as, as far as we played a team. They had somebody that, that, that had exposure. They gave it to us. And now we have to quarantine and we can't put our best players out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, You can fill the team because most colleges have 100 players. But that's an unfair that's an unfair competitive advantage. And it's no wrongdoing whether you're vaccinated or not. Okay, I I hear you. I'm I'm just going to play devil's advocate here, though. So what do you do? You just continue to have this rule in place where if you can't field a team or you have a certain number of guys six, you're going to continue to postpone games or reschedule them. Like that requires extra time and and loopholes and TV contracts and you know, adding games to the end of the season or whatever it may be. Like, that's also, we. I mean, how long can we keep doing this for? Well, we, we would think that we're maybe another year from being able to, you know, we, we haven't had the vaccine available for, for more than a year. So we would think maybe next year things can go back to normal right. as we can be able to figure some things out and, and have some long-term research and data on how this um, virus is not only just, you know, moving across the country, but also how it's mutating, right, and, and what's different, right? So I think we should have a little bit of empathy, right, for the players and the athletes that are trying to do their best to make sure that they're available to entertain you people, you know what I'm saying, to make sure that, you know, because he's not putting himself at risk, he's in his own bubble. He doesn't have to go out there and figure out, you know, if I get this virus, you know, what does that mean towards my future? You know, how important is it for me not to let my teammates down, my coaches? You know, what should I do? Like, these are all decisions that young men shouldn't have to make, right? But this is, the, this is, the, this is what we've inherited. This is where we're at in, the, in, in our place in history, right? And this is going to be something where there's no right or wrong answer, but you should be empathetic as an adult who's not putting yourself – he's like a general sitting on top of, of the mountain watching his troops go fight. Oh, no, we, we're not going to have any empathy for you if you guys get an outbreak. And we all know that people don't get, you know, the virus because they did something wrong all the time, right? They can be as responsible as you can think, and then you still can get it. I shouldn't be punished for that. And because my team is a a championship-caliber team, I shouldn't be punished because something that we couldn't control happened to us. Okay, well – then you got to win the games in front of you and behind you. Like, that's what it's going to come down to. And per usual in college football, but especially now in the SEC, every game is truly going to count, and you're going to have to try and stay as well as you possibly can in terms of your health. Now, how does this compare to other conferences? Because I think that's the big question mark here. Like, the SEC has put that out there. Like, Mm -hmm. they are not going to postpone or reschedule games. If you can't play, you can't play, and we're going to look at the word forfeit. That's only the SEC. 
What about the other conferences? Well, I mentioned how we're going to have media days coming down the wire here in the ACC and the Big Ten. As far as the Big 12 goes, their media days was last week, and Commissioner Bob Bowlesby said the Big 12 has not made a decision at all yet about forfeitures and postponements. Not all student athletes have been vaccinated, which is obvious at this point. Not everyone has been vaccinated. That's unfortunate, says Bob Bowlesby. To them... He said you need to be prepared to undergo occasional testing for those who have not been vaccinated. For football programs that cannot field enough players to safely play a game, there likely will be no postponements in 2021, so the Big 12 following the same sentiments. If a team has too many key performers with the virus, it's probably going to have to be a forfeit. So so key, <laughs> key, right? So we're putting value on different players, man. I just, I just don't get it. I just think, you know, even last year, I think they had an opportunity because we didn't know with the whole Ohio State, did they play enough games that they deserve to get in? Why wouldn't they just be able to have some type of emergency plan set where in, in case we have some big teams that we know like with push, our eye test, Push the playoff out two weeks or something right. along or, those lines. Or expand it, right? Or expand well, it, right? they're working on that. But they, should, they, can, but they can emergency expand it for, for, for you know, four teams if something happens. What happens if a bunch of players from Alabama get sick? What happens if a bunch of players from Clemson get sick that we know? And they, and they lose the game. Right. But we know they're one of the best teams. It's an unfair competitive advantage. And listen, you know, that's almost and I don't want to say that's like performance enhanced, but that's that's an unfair advantage. If somebody gets sick, they can't control that. Maybe expand the playoff system just for the couple of years so that we can make sure that we get it right. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.